Hi, I'm Josh, and this is Cars and Joshy. Welcome to Cars and Joshy. Today I'm going to be making my coolant hoses running from the icebox up to the, the killer chiller system and into the uh, heat exchanger. So make sure you go ahead and listen to this channel. That's like, share, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell for new videos. Let's get to it. All right, so I'm going to repurpose the hose that I initially had on here. Uh, coming out of the top of the brick and going down in here to the heat exchanger um, I'm gonna repurpose that because I need to cut it up Anyways, so that's gonna run from here That uh, stays open. It's gonna tee in right here I'm probably gonna put it in that top one and then it's gonna go over here to the inlet on the killer chiller and then the other part of the T, uh, let's see, the other part of the T is going to be coming out of the outlet of the heat exchanger. So the bottom, this bottom one is going to go to here. The bypass valve is going to go to here. And then this is going to go to the inlet to the uh, killer chiller. The cooling part is going to be pretty easy. Uh, I just got one T, the rest of them are A in. It's all push lock, it's all heater hose. So that should be all right. Anywhere that I have uh, some rubbing going on, I'm gonna put some of the shielding over it. I might end up buying some bigger shielding as well uh, for this hose, but I'm gonna go ahead and make my cuts and get this, this T put in here. I get to use my cool tools uh, hose assembly an hose assembly kit again this makes it so easy to install these push lock hoses i don't even have to really use a wrench on this one i did spray spray it with a little wd-40 to help it get on there but i mean it's it's going on there pretty easily all right i think that's on there all the way all right, that was easy enough. I got this one made up. It's coming out, going up through here into the T and then over into the inlet on the killer chiller. So the next hose I'm gonna make is gonna be this one. This is the, the bypass. So no coolant's gonna be coming through here. So that's gonna go straight to the, the heat exchanger. So the way that this flows, coolant's gonna come into the ball valve it's gonna flow out here, all the way into the killer chiller and back out. Whenever I hit the switch, it'll block this port, open this one up, it's gonna go through the, uh, through the heat exchanger, back up through here, through the killer chiller and into the brick. It's not gonna be getting cooled off because if it, if it flows this route, that means something's wrong with the killer chiller. If I have to open it and bypass the killer chiller, it's because the AC is not working or something. And so it's just gonna be cooled air from here, almost like a, a dual, uh, dual pass because, or a dual heat exchanger setup because it's gonna be dropping the temperature here. And then it may even drop the temperature a little bit more here when it comes through here because you're gonna get airflow and there's spins in here just like a, a normal heat exchanger. So I may get a little bit more temperature drop through here, but it's not gonna be anything like if uh, the AC were working. So it's just gonna be another place for the coolant to flow through. All right, I think we're getting there. So I got this ran. Coming down here, hooking right into the heat exchanger. I took some of that rubber edging and I went ahead and put it here because it's pretty close there. I don't know how well this uh, hose wrap is going to, or wire loom or whatever you want to call it. I don't know how well it's going to stay on here. This stuff might just end up vibrating off or falling off at some point, but I'm going to leave it on there for now. We'll see how it goes. I want to do a test fitting real quick. Um, at some point, I'm gonna get the headlight buckets and set them in here and see if this all clears back here. I really hope it does. I'd be kind of disappointed if it doesn't, but uh, 
one thing that I did check clearance on is if we look down here, the hose basically right there. It's leaning up against part of the grill that I had trimmed back to clear the killer chiller. It's just it's just pushing up against it just a little bit. I don't think that's that big of a deal. I'll see what I can do about that. Other than that, it's still fitting on there pretty good. All right, I got one more hose down. This one comes straight out of the killer chiller. Routes up around here. Check out that clip that was on the factory F body radiator. Holds the hose, hose in there just perfect. And comes up and around, straight into the brick. Hose has already been uh, pushed all the way up on there. So that one is good to go. I've got two hoses left to make, and those are the ones that are gonna run from the pump in the back. So I've got one to run up to here, and the other one is the return. It goes all the way to the back. So uh, I guess it's time to raise, the, raise it up and see how I wanna run it along the frame. All right, so I'm up under the El Camino, and uh, I have 190 one straight and 145 left uh, I was hoping to have two 90s coming out the bottom and heading up towards the front but it's been so long since I uh, I did that mount I actually do have two 90s in here already so I'm good to go I've got 50 foot of hoses or 50 feet of hoses um and it's all in one big reel so what i was thinking about doing because i don't know exactly how much i have left and i don't want to stretch it all out and and do that so what i think i'm gonna do is i'm gonna hook up one end of the hose to one of the fittings and the other end of the hose to the other fitting and then i'll i'll run it down towards the front of the truck and wherever the center is, I'll cut it there and then cut it to fit from there. That way I'll know that I have enough for both fittings to run up to the engine. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll see how much hose I have left. Hopefully I don't have to order any more. So. All right, well, that seemed to work out pretty good. I put two ends in there and just cut them even right there at the where they evened out. So both of these should be more than enough length to reach up into here uh, from about just behind the window back here. So yeah, that should be, should be no problem. Okay, so I got the hoses ran. I didn't think I'd have enough room to run them both on the outside over here. So I ran one of them back behind uh where the floor pan drops down and stuff and then i ran the other one up front here and so it kind of made like when when the outside hose drops down through here it's a little bit of a tight squeeze coming through here i'm hoping i'm not squeezing that hose too much and causing a restriction there uh but i guess let's see where it's dropping down right here but it looks all right. I put some little protective sheathing on it over here because there's a bolt that comes up right there. I don't want it scratching or rubbing a hole in there. A bunch of zip ties in here to kind of keep it close to uh, the fuel lines that are there. Uh, they've got some clamps holding it to the frame. So zip tie it to those and then uh, got it running up through here by the bulkhead and then we'll go up top and have a look at how it's routed up there but i think it'll be okay routed like this down here it's uh on the side of the frame it doesn't drop lower than the frame so shouldn't have any issues there one thing that i did notice while i was down here these fuel lines they were a couple centimeters away from my muffler and so I went ahead and 
I went ahead and did a little, here, let me flip this over a little bit. I went ahead and put a little hole right there, threw a zip tie in there, zip tied it up there, and then zip, zip tie it over here to keep it away from the muffler. If the zip tie ever breaks, it's still just a, a little bit away from the muffler, so hoping that'll be all right. I just don't want to burn no hole or drip fuel on my exhaust. That wouldn't be good. So hopefully that'll hold it. So up front, we have the return line. It's coming up this way. Run up here and up underneath this cowl plate here. I'm going into top of the brick right there. And then the feed line. It's coming up in between, basically in between the bulkhead and this fender liner coming up and following this kind of groove that's already built into the fender liner going straight into the hole that's cut out here right into the the ball valve so that's my feed and it goes straight through the killer chiller comes out of the killer chiller goes back into the brick out of 50 feet of heater hose that's all i have left those two pieces right here that one there and that one so 50 feet worked out pretty good for running a tank from basically a trunk to the to the front the front mount intercooler so i even needed a little bit extra because of the killer chiller system but anyways 50 feet was good for the for the whole system so that's all of my coolant lines for the supercharger and my goal was to go ahead and do the ac lines and the supercharger lines all in one video but i just don't have time it's a weekend i need to spend some time with my family and kids so uh, i'm gonna call it good on this uh, for today thanks for watching cars and joshy josh out